this message finds to fit and find. My name is Shashank Tyagi and I welcome you all to Edicam. Recently, we saw a movement in backdrop of Tamil Nadu legislative assembly elections where some people were demanding that Tamil Nadu government should quash the department responsible for managing Hindu temples. And similarly, on the same line, we saw a petition filed by Rasabha MB Subramanian Swami in Supreme Court keeping the same demand and saying these temple regulatory boards are unconstitutional. So let, let's understand what is unconstitutional, what is not and what is the debate, what Supreme Court has to say. That is important for you, right? Free Hindu temples from government control, that was the point which was raised. But the point of discussion which I am having here is not restricted just to temples. I am going to use the word religious institutions because government do has a say in other, other religious institutions as well. For example, work board, right? And in Kerala, we saw some reformist Christians demanding that Kerala government should establish some state boards to manage some churches. Okay, so it is not just about temples, it is about religious institutions and regulation by state, what provisions of constitution can, can be considered abridged and why we can say this can be a positive way ahead, right? So giving you an example, Hindu Religious and Charitable Endowment Department, Government of Tamil Nadu. Let's go back into the history. From where the tradition started, that government managing the affairs of religion, managing these temples. So it is found that that in Indian subcontinent, from the time of these princely states, many kings used to have a separate department for managing the religious affairs and especially managing temples. So it is not new. But when it comes to modern laws and these departments, it is found that that Britishers actually incorporated these laws in Bengal and Madras presidency in 1870. Okay. Now, why we are having this debate here? Because some people think that if government is overseeing the management of religious you know, institutions, then this is against fundamentals of secularism. So what's your take? Is government officers consider that you are being a district magistrate? So if you are being a district, for example, uh, there are many districts where when you are going to be appointed a district magistrate, you will be having an ex officio position in management board of certain temples okay so at that time can you say that this is against the secular spirit because one definition of secularism says that that government has no religion and if government functionary you being a district magistrate is becoming a part of management board of temple as an officer so can we say that this is against secularism or we have another picture, another side of the story, another side of story also we have. So according to some people, this is anthema to secular and democratic republic. This is against the democratic and secular republic. But another interpretation is, this is not against secularism. It means if government functionaries are being appointed on managing board, it is not against secularism because Indian model of secularism is different from Western model of secularism. Western model of secularism talks about clear separation between state and religion. According to them, religion is a matter of public private sphere. And when it comes to state, government functions, they are a matter of public sphere. There should be clear separation. But when it comes to Indian secularism, we don't talk about complete separation. We talk about some interjections, inter you should say some interventions are being done on regular basis by state, if state thinks, if government thinks, okay, this particular tenet, this particular practice of this religion is abridging, subjugating that fundamental right, to safeguard that fundamental right, to safeguard, you know, to bring some social reform, government can intervene in your religious affair, that is Indian secularism. Now, question arises, why Indian secularism is different from Western secularism. Usi ko copy kar lete. No. You know why we have different secularism? The simple reason is 
because European civic history and Indian civic history has been different. Dono ka history alag hai, dono ki experience alag hai. If you take into consideration the example of Europe, so there the government is not actually intervening into the affairs of, you know, uh, churches or other religious institutions. No. You know why? Because Europe has seen dark age of history where they have seen how church had a dominate, you know, dominating role in various you know, organs of government. It means there was a time in many of the states, actually church has a control in judiciary, legislative and executive. And, you know, um, there were many wars fought on the basis of religion. Mercenaries fighting. So, at that time, the scholars in the West came onto this conclusion that religion is an identity. And nation is an identity. But if I ask, which identity is more closer to people? Just give your answer. What you have observed around you. If I ask that actually when you see religious wars, they are not just religious wars, they are war of identity. People connecting to religion, okay, this is me, this is my religion. And fighting with other religion, you know, uh, saying that me, uh, I am superior because I am having this identity. So these are identity clashes. And which identity is closer? If we have to choose between nation and religion. So I know your answer. You have to become bureaucrats. So you will say, oh sir, my identity is India. Religion is my secondary identity. Many of you might say that. But talk about practicality. What is happening on ground? People are more closer to a government or some laws, this constitution or people are more closer to their religion. People are more closer to their religion. And that is why we are having this debate. People saying, oh, free are temples. Because temples, this religion identity is more closer to us. You should not intervene it, in it. Right? That is why we are having this issue. So, European scholars saw that. And that is why I say that ki, huh, this religious identity is very powerful. You know, this has given dark age to Europe, European history. So let's separate it. Keep it in private sphere. But when it comes to India, in India, there is a different civic history. We saw that religion is not contradictory to the you know, effective functioning of government. In fact, religion has worked as a moral force. Or you can say religion has worked for pushing government towards good governance. So that is why. Indian constitutional framers were very much aware about this and that is why we saw that yes, let's bring a different model Indian secularism because we have a different civic history. Right? So French model and Indian model is totally different. Okay? <clears throat> now, when it comes to Article 25, what it says? It gives you freedom to con freedom of conscience, you know, right to freely profess, practice, propagate your religion. Means you are above 18 years of age. At one fine day, you wake up in the morning and went to your mother, father and say, Mummy, Papa, I am changing my religion. And they would ask, why? So you will say, Ki Shashank sir has taught us polity and in polity, they have, you know, he has explained the idea of religion, identity and also explained Article 25, which gives me freedom of conscience and right to choose my religion. Profess, practice, propagate as per my will. So I am going to choose, change my religion. So your father, mother will allow you, okay, or you know, uh, whatever he is, they are going to do, that is up to you. But the point here is, yes, as per law, you have this power, okay. But by evening, what you did, you assembled all of your siblings and told them that you are going to give them regular parties if they subscribe to the, your religion. So you thought. That Shashank sir told me, Article 25 also talk about propagating religion. So by giving party, by learning them that you are going to give them treat on regular basis, you are propagating your religion. If you think like this, then I must, I must tell you what you are doing is not your fundamental right. Action can be taken against you. Okay, because propagating religion is not actually learning some, some people in due of say money, jobs 
or any kind of you know these tactics okay and you cannot force other peoples to choose their religion okay so it means uh, we should actually talk about restrictions as well it means this right if abridges public order morality because what you were doing was not moral it was immoral right and that is why action can be taken against you so read the full document theek hai conditions ko padhiye so restrictions are there right so similarly when it comes to these restrictions morality public order health then how we are going to you know handle these so for this our constitution give power to state government okay so state can make laws a state can make laws to regulate economic financial and secular as activities associated with religion and state also has power to make laws to for social welfare or reform in particular religion for example triple talaq for example sabri mala issue right so it is not unconstitutional actually our constitution gives this power okay now uh, this was a book by p r ganpati ayer and in this book he was making this point that a state having say in managing religious affair is not new in india okay in mughal times also in this book example has been given about mughal ta- mughal times also that state was having a separate department separate funding was being done to manage religious institutions and in this book many examples have give, have been given in which state was actually managing religious affairs of this institution so this is not a new concept this has been in practice in indian subcontinent for a long time take a look what supreme court said in shirur math case so supreme court said that that actually basic framework of this law means law for managing religious affairs is not actually against article 25 26 it is actually in consonance with the authority vested in state because i told you that actually state can make laws to manage financial economic affairs right so that is why in shirur math case it went into into the favor and i told you that is it is not the matter of temple it is a matter of religious institutions and for example we have waqf act 1995 so government also has say in this okay government appointing maulvis to manage this waqf properties funding waqf boards right similarly in kerala state reformist christians were demanding that state should have a man management committee for managing these temple oh, sorry churches right so for finances and properties so there has been demand across religion so now i hope we have reached to this conclusion that you know saying that these laws are abridging the secular credentials is not correct okay and if we say that we should remove these laws it means we are mispricing the laws value because this law particular this particular law has many values for example it is helpful in bringing social justice and how bringing social justice for example in certain areas what has found when government was not having you know uh, intervention in managing these temples then dominant caste of the area they used to manage these temples they used to you know manage the ceremonies of the temple and they would you know uh, restrict the entry of certain caste don't you think this is against social justice so state intervention when some officers were part of this management board they ensured that yes we have to mention article 15 right we cannot discriminate for the entry of any citizen whomsoever and entry into this religious affairs right so actually it promote indian secularism model okay because i told you that indian secularism model is different right and in certain laws what has been found for example in tamil nadu law says that when it comes to management board out of 3 one person should belong to sc or st don't you think it is enhancing the representation of all sections ensuring right and efficient management of temples is also one benefit of these laws for example but because when endowments are coming in funds are coming in large volume of funds are coming in and government has processes that these are the principles on which you have to work you have to fu- audit it and this audit should be you know submitted so and so in this process 
the department has to present the report and there should be a uniformity in the kind of principles they use to manage these temples so it brings efficiency in management of these temples okay so it is also important for the temples local economy for example temple is not just a religious place it is also supporting livelihood for the other people who are de dependent on these temples many flower vendors many prasad vendors right many com you know rickshaws priests so all of these people's livelihood is dependent on temple and that is why one idea was proposed that we should have this temp we should have this you know principle in use that government can you know managing these temples supervising these temples but government should should do what have a big temple in center and this if this temple is having huge funds then these funds should be utilized to develop areas around other temples so it should be like a center and on the periphery we have other temples so in this more mode what we are going to do we are going to develop other temples as well support livelihood of other people as well and actually we are going to support the right to religion right so take a look on some of the supreme court judgments which are on this particular topic for example in n aditya case phenomenal case in which supreme court said when it comes to priest in the temple why priesthood should be restricted to brahmins only if a particular person is having certain qualities having certain you know knowledge then this person should be you know appointed as a priest of the temple and that is how due to this intervention we found that many shrul caste have been appointed as priests okay then we have this ratilal versus state of bombay case in which it was said that when it comes to mal administration financial mismanagement then if government is intervening that you cannot say that it is against article 26 you cannot say that shirurmat case i have told you one aspect of shirurmat case that government controlling is in consonance with what constitution says another point here is shirurmat case told about what are the essential part of religion so what is going to be the essential part of religion so that was said in shirurmat case when it comes to essential part essential part means this is part of this is essential part means this is going to be considered as a valid reasoning for ensuring article 25 and government is not going to intervene since it is essential part of your religion but managing your temple managing your mosque managing your you know work board or any you know religious institution is not essential part of your religion okay then this subramanyam swami case and similarly in this case uh, supreme court said that that regulating a temple does not mean that actually there is this is superseding the power of those people for managing this administration means it is not for indefinite period there can be checks in between and another kerala padmanabha padman swami temple case famous case right so in this case uh, supreme court gave sebastish rights to the royal family of that place and when it comes to shebashish rights what does it mean rights to manage the temple affairs okay so these are the famous cases related to a state having say in management of temple slash religious institutions i hope this short discussion added some value in your you know point of views or you know your knowledge around this topic if you got some value do mention in comments and you can share this video along with you know other rest aspirants see you in the next video till then keep learning keep going shashank yadav signing off